long ago in a land far away, there lived the most beautiful princess. And suitors would travel from far and wide to try and gain her approval. My darling princess, I've brought you a letter. It's about, it's a letter. Princess, hello. Uh, it's a letter about how much I love you. A letter of my love for you. Hello, princess. You all right, mate? Give it a rest. Christ on a bicycle. Hello and welcome to the opener. And today we've been for you Love Letter, a game which you've probably heard about before. We've talked about it a lot on the site. And I uh, just want to talk about it again briefly. Why? Because it's Christmas, isn't it? It is Christmas. Well, it's not, but it is quite soon. And the thing about Christmas is sometimes it's good to have old favourites. Sometimes it's good to have games that everybody knows. And if Love Letter isn't a game that everybody knows in your family Christmas household thing, then... Uh, it probably should be. I'm just going to explain why. The most striking thing about Love Letter is the fact that it comes in this tiny, tiny bag. You can fit it in your pocket. Well, you know, I'm a princess, so... That's gone right down to my navel. I can just pop the bag up. Hey! It's the advantage of not actually having breasts. These are just gloves. Um, but yeah, you can kind of carry this around with you everywhere. And a lot of time we talked in the past about portable games, things like... Uh, uh, Skull and Roses and all these things that you can just have in a bag, carry around with you, pop out, have a go. Resistance Avalon is another classic, but this one's tiny. Tiny, tiny. And it's because it's got nothing in it, really. It's just got some cards. And it's very simple. It's just a case of, it's a hidden identity game. A bit like Coup, which I reviewed, or Coop, as it's pronounced correctly, as I reviewed in another opener not that long ago. But Love Letter is the daddy. You know, Coop is fun, but Love Letter is simpler and better. So what's the deal exactly? Well, I'm the princess, and as the princess, I'm a very beautiful and highly desirable woman. Which means everybody, everybody wants to try and win my affections by getting their letter to me. And what that means in the game is effectively at the end of the game, the person who's got the highest number on their card is the person who gets their letter to the princess first. And because obviously, despite being highly attractive and massively desirable, I am also clearly a very flippant woman and will marry the first person to give me a letter. It doesn't seem terribly sensible. However, it doesn't really make sense either because the most powerful card in the deck is the princess, which means that the princess gives herself a letter. And it, I mean, it, the story doesn't make any sense. The story doesn't make any sense, which, which effectively makes my decision to dress up as a princess seem kind of pointless. What you've got here really is a game of deduction. There are five guards, which means it's very likely that somebody might have a guard in their hand, but then you've got like only two priests, two barons, two handmaids, two princes, one king, one countess, and one princess. And as these cards are played throughout the game, you gradually start to whittle down and get an idea of what cards are still in play, what cards might be in someone's hand. Because really, at once, you're only ever holding one card in Love Letter. At the start of each turn, though, you pick up another, but then you have to play one of those two cards. Working out what card somebody has in their hand is effectively how you win Love Letter. Because when I said it before about, you know, being the last person there, being the person with the highest card at the end, yeah, that's nice, but most of the time, the best way to win is by knocking everyone else out. And the way you do that is by knowing what they've got. The most common card in the deck is the guard. And the guard allows you to point at somebody, guess what card they've got, and if you're right, then they're out of the round. How do you work out what they've got? Well, there's loads of ways you can do that. You can sometimes just read them and get a feel for what's going on. Sometimes if people look fearful, if people look worried, they've got the princess. Because the princess, you cannot get rid of. If at any point you have to discard the princess card, you're out, which means if somebody keeps picking up things and then putting down, seems a bit worried, they might have the princess. Priest is a fun one. You just get to look at their hand. You say, let me see what card you've got. And then you know. It means you could be in a lot of trouble if, I mean, sometimes they're not allowed to tell other people what they've just seen, but there's a certain kind of grin that comes after somebody's seen that somebody else has a princess in their hand that is just very, very easy to read. You've also got fun stuff like the Countess. 
If somebody puts down the Countess, it means they've got something rather special in their hand, because you cannot hold the Countess if you have either the King or the Prince in your hand, which means, effectively, you know, if somebody plays a Countess, they've either got a King or a Prince, or a Princess, because as I say, you can never play that. It's a kind of... It seems difficult, and actually the most difficult thing about this as a starter, as an opener, is at the start there's a little bit of explanations, and people have to kind of understand what all the cards do before you can go. But that's it. Like, apart from what all the cards do, and what all the cards do is written on each of the cards, and everyone gets a little handy guide so you can see exactly what each of the cards do, there's no more game to learn. It's just that. And the rest of it is just bluffing, deduction... Simple, simple fun. And how do you win? Well, every time you win a round, you get a token of affection. A token of affection! They're actual tokens! That's a brilliant pun. That's a brilliant pun. I will fight anybody who thinks that isn't a brilliant pun. And once you've got enough of them, depending on how many people are playing, you've won! You've won the game! You've won the princess's love. Oh, I love you so much because you've sent me a letter. It's a simple, beautiful, tidy little game that you can pop in your pocket. And to be honest, one of the main complaints I have about the game isn't really, it's not a fair complaint, is you can only play it with four people. So you can play it with two people, three people, or four people, which means if you've got five people, you're just a bit stuffed. And that's not really a complaint, it's just the nature of how some games are designed. But the problem is Love Letter is so much fun that often you will want to play it, and everyone will want to play it. And it's kind of difficult if you've got too many people. But having said that, it's kind of perfect for small family gatherings. So if you're going home this Christmas and you have some people who, you know, family who don't play maybe, this is a lovely little game. And it's a game you don't have to go and set up on a table. You can just play on a little coffee table or play somewhere simple. You can just play it anywhere. In fact, I've heard some really touching stories about people playing in hospitals and people playing it in long airport sessions where they're just stuck in somewhere for hours and hours it's it's kind of invaluable and it's something that is just a little thing you can keep in your pocket or in your brassiere you know whatever and it's just a little gateway to having lots of fun and having these little things you can carry around with you and having these little moments that you can just pop out of your pocket and jump straight into at a time like christmas especially if you're traveling and you have to travel light it's just nice to be able to have something like this that's really showing, isn't it? It's just nice. It's good. And that's kind of what Christmas should be about. Spend some time with people you love. You know, try and have fun in a way that doesn't feel too forced. And Love Letter is a classic little game. So, yeah, that's Love Letter. There's not really much more to say about it. You probably already know about it. I'm sorry if this is just being very repetitive. And I hope the fact that I've dressed up as a lady princess provides you some small amount of... Solace makes it feel like it's been worth your while coming and hearing me talk about this. Something you already know about. But hey, Christmas, make it a tradition. Because traditions are important. This is a tradition for me. My grandfather was a pantomime dame for many years. I never got to saw, see him in a pantomime, but uh, yeah, apparently he was brilliant. And so I continued the tradition by occasionally dressing up as an entirely unbelievable woman. So yes, love letter. Make yourself a little family tradition. It's a nice one to have, I think. But now, let's get extravagant with some gingerbread pears. So first of all, to make these delicious, delicious biscuits, you're gonna get 350 grams of plain flour. Then you wanna add one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, but if you haven't got any of that, then I'm using four teaspoons of baking powder, which should be fine. Now for the good stuff, we want a heaped teaspoon of cinnamon, and I'm going to go for three and a bit heaped teaspoons of ginger, because I like it really fiery gingery. Go nuts. Sift all of this into a mixing bowl, or as I'm doing here, into a mixer, because I'm a bit lazy. And then add in little cubes of butter. You want 125 grams of butter, which is easy, because it's just half, half a block. Oh, you don't even need to. Brilliant. Next up, whiz it like Beckham, and then add in about 200 grams of sugar. You can add in a bit more, but I think because I'm going to glaze them with icing, you don't want it to be too sweet. So 200 grams of light brown sugar should be just enough. And then mix it up again. Now, in a separate thing, you want to combine four tablespoons of golden syrup with an egg. And whisk that up until it looks like sticky toffee sauce. But it's not, it's just an egg with some syrup. So don't, don't get carried away. 
And before I put this mixture in, I'm actually just going to pop in a little bit of chilli because I'm a spicy customer. Pour that into the machine, give it a bit of a whiz, or if you're using your hands, just do it in a bowl. And then, oh god, it looks like this. This isn't... this is... what? what is this? This is rubble. Don't panic, all you gotta do here is just keep messing around with this big pile of stuff and eventually it will resemble rubbish Play-Doh. Get a piece of cling film, cover it up, well, realise that the piece of cling film you've got isn't big enough, go and get another piece of cling film, then cover it all up and put it in the fridge for about 15 minutes. Once it's chilled, put it on a piece of greaseproof paper, roll it out to between half a centimetre to a centimetre in the size. I reckon a centimetre if you like them a bit squishy, half a centimetre if you like them crunchy. And then just carefully use a knife or something to cut out the shapes that you want. Obviously I'm doing pears. Here comes the science. Look, you can just take all the bits out of the middle, in between, and then you don't have to move them or lift them out. Way Genius. And then just prod all the edges to get them nice, like some sort of ungodly baking monster that you are. And lift that sheet of biscuit things onto a baking tray. By this point, you've probably got bored of carefully cutting out shapes, so just roll out the offcuts again and cut them up into weird shapes, because you really only need a few biscuits to show off just how amazing you are. The rest can just go in a tin for you to eat personally. And you've been preheating the oven. Of course you have, so it should be about 180 degrees, and you want to put them in now for about 15 minutes. Next up, the icing. Now this is, I don't have a clue how to make icing. I pretty much just put icing sugar in a bowl and put some water in it. I don't, I, I don't know how much icing sugar, I don't know how much water. I honestly don't know what I'm doing at all. But I do know that if you put a very small amount of colouring in, it will make it green. Be careful with the colouring. It's It can have an overpowering taste if you're not careful, so be very, very gentle. Et voila, it's biscuit time, and they've all merged together to create one Omni Biscuit. Oh god, call the police. No, don't call the police, it's fine. Use a knife while they're still hot, and you should be able to separate them quite easily. And then once they've slightly cooled, you can start adding the icing, which I'm doing here just with a, a fork, and you just let it kind of fall onto them gently. They're doing a neat, very beautiful, neat job. This isn't neat at all. Oh god. Oh god, I've made a huge mistake. Nobody... Nobody could have foreseen this. Almost there! Now this is the point where you go and pour yourself a glass of wine, because f everything. Ah ha ha! But no! If you put the oven on 50 degrees and you just pop them in for about half an hour on the lowest, lowest, lowest setting in the oven, then you will find that the biscuits and the icing have started to set quite nicely. Wait until they've cooled so you don't break the biscuits when pulling them off the tray. And you should be able to separate them quite nicely from the horrendous pool of infinite green sugar. Oh my word, that's it! Gingerbread pears! They look alright! And that's it! That's the opener. A nice little game you can pop in your pocket and some nice little biscuits that you can take around to somebody's house. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna go and have a long shower. Goodbye!